Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this tutorial, we continue the series called Daredevil Python Machine Learning Library. And this is the part number three, and this is extended version of the part number two. How are you discussing about the HTML and also the XML file? That how can you do it using the Pandas library? In this video, we will know how we can CSV or JSON file read kar sakte using Pandas library. So in this video, we will discuss how we can read HTML or XML file. Ko read kar sakte. And this video is a combination of the Hindi and English, but most of the time I'm trying to use the English word. So without wasting any time, har har mahadabal ke start karte tutorial. So in order to extract the data from a website, we are going to be using here the Pandas library. Let's say you have some data, like it can be the share market data or any kind of data, it's available on your website. Or it may be the product data that is available inside the Amazons or Flipkart, whatever else, right? So I'm going to take an example of that. I am just going to take an example from the Wikipedia list of countries and the dependence by populations. So if I go down, you can see here there is a list with having the country, the population and percentage of the world, date and source. So what I'm going to do, I am simply going to extract the data from here using Pandas library and I'm going to convert this data into one data frame. So when you get the data from your website, then you can do some analysis on that. So what I actually do, I just copy this link, the website from the Wikipedia, then I'm going to import here the Pandas. So let's say import. Uh, pandas as pd then simply shift enter or you can also uh, click here to run the file then what i can do i am going to define here a variable let's call df equal to pd dot read html because this is one html file or it, this is nothing but a website and you know website is a combination of the html css and javascript and in the back end there should be a server it can be psp or it can be the python django server right so now what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to pass my link that I copied. So this is the uh, link for the list of countries and dependencies by the population. If I shift enter and you can simply see it is loaded. Now if I see the df dot hat, let's say df dot hat and this one and you can see, uh, okay, list object has no attribute hat. Now the question is why it's not converted into the uh, data frame. I mean df dot hat. If I'm trying to see it, the type of that let's say type of my df so this is nothing but one list now my question is uh, how can you get the data from this uh, website it will actually give me one list it is not by default converted into the uh, data frame so how can I actually get the value from the here right maybe there are so many lists are available inside your data frame right i mean in your website so many tables are available now the question is when you're trying to access the value from a list obviously you using here the index number so let's say if i try to use the index number let's say df number zero index so again if i run and click here and you can see here all the value are available inside your uh, website it is showing up that you can see country dependency population if i go on here you can see here country of list and dependency by population and you can see the country the index number and all of them see in this website there have just one just one um tables right so that's why it actually reading this table from just one table if it have the multiple number of list so it can be read from here if i give here the one maybe it will give me some index error if i run this out yeah it's not giving me the index error it, there is another list also but it's not quite good we'll take another example on that so let's say make it zero so this is how you can actually load your data from a website if i see another website let's say uh, okay, so you can see this is a website uh, from the Wikipedia actually the block COVID-19 pandemic by country by territory and if I go here you can see there are so many lists are available I mean so many data like uh, this data and also here another one another table and another table so many table are available now you can also access them you can access them based on the index number and also the matches so if I, if I go in here again so if I hover over here and use the shift tab and if I explore it, you can see here the function, a parameter the argument is called the match. So using match, you can also uh, match your data and you can also access them uh, based on your mass. So if I'm trying to load the data from here, let's say I'm going to copy this sound and I'm going to pass it here and I'm going to just going to replacing this link for the copy it one. Okay, so this is the data for that. So let's go on the of the full screen mode and i'm going to copy this one and i can go on the full screen mode right so let's go on here how is it is it yep so if i going to make it changes here and let's 
shift enter and it will run in the file okay let's take some shell and you can see it will load in the data from your website and if i try to see the df of zero index and if i click it to run this file and you can see the first one is appear if i again uh, select the number one and you can see this is the number one i mean the table again two so there are so many are available again let's say five let's run it out so there are so many tables are available when based on the list that it will show up so let's say i am trying to show on here uh the which one which one that's i'm going to show let's say it have country and territories and it's also have the locations and let's say i'm trying to copy this one right i mean based on the uh back in it just going to copy this one and i'm going to go on here and i'm going to match i mean just going to pass the data i will pass the data from here based on my match query so let's say match and i'm going to give here the data so which one is the lo location of the backend okay let be like a uh, match on based on the back back in it right so again shift enter and i need to also give here zero because it will actually give here the zero one so you can see here based on the uh back in it it actually try to load in the data from here right so this is how it actually work maybe it having another one let's see this out okay okay there are so many are available let's say two see so many available actually uh, actually access the data based on this back in it okay so if i go on the website again so let's say go on the website again and this one and maybe there are okay there are so many are things are available based on that so let's say i am searching from the data uh let's say that million okay let's say based on that uh these stats okay let's go on the website yeah quote again list index out of range so let's say make it title one and you can see here based on the baking net actually it loaded maybe it's not loading up correctly so that's it's not showing up so if i see the zeroth index so you can see uh it having the baking netted also right i mean vaccinated so not backing at vaccinated so higher it is fine the vaccinated it actually uh, getting the data from this website so there are so many are available so let's say i'm trying to access the data based on the deaths based on the deaths i mean there are so many a list are available so that's why so let's say i'm going to just run this shell from here and it will give me the uh, output based on the debt i mean in which uh table it having the debt again it will give me this kind of error okay let's make it html html and let's copy this out and just paste it out here okay shift enter okay so based on the dats it actually gave me the data i mean how it actually accessed it okay it's actually showing up like that right so that's it how can you actually access the data from here and if you you can also check this type of the data i mean how it actually look like so how can you do let's say i'm going to check the type of the data so let's say data i mean the df let's say this is a df of which one let's say df of zero so you can see it's right now at data frame it's converted into the data frame okay it's code it's actually showing up this dates uh, in just a row wise right in a row wise so that's it's not <laughs> looks cool okay that based on the dates you can see it's actually showing up all the data here so you can also save your file inside your a directory inside your directory you can also do that let's say i'm going to save this file inside my directory you can also do that using uh, let's say df of zero to which one to html to html and you can simply check demo.html let's say i'm going to save it as a demo.html demo.html like that so shift enter it will save it inside your folder and if you can check you can see demo.html is showing up so this is how it should look like in the HTML format. You can do some, uh, add some CSS, and you can also do some styling on that. So this is how you can actually extract the data from the HTML. I mean any website, and store it inside a, a Pandas data frame, and you can also export it from here and do some preprocessing on the data. Now you will see that how can you also do the same thing using in the XML file also. And how can you do that if you have an XML file? So before converting your XML file into the data frame, you need to also know that what is actually XML. So XML, the full form of the XML is nothing but called extensible markup language. 
is a markup language that provided rules to define any data unlike other programming languages xml cannot perform computing operation by itself instead any programming language or software can be implemented or structured by data management right so this is nothing but one kind of html2 it's just like html but it has having some different on that so what i can do uh, you can see this is nothing but one structure of the xml and also the html so this is the different on that so now what i can do we can simply creating an xml file and you're going to uh, convert the xml file into one pandas data frame right so if you have the knowledge about the Android studio uh, that how can you create applications using java maybe you know the xml higher you do oh, changes on the xml file and uh, your ui are changes so based on the xml you can actually creating some button uh, the text view so on right so this is how actually xml works so now what i'm going to do i'm simply going to exploring this xml and try to uh, convert them into the pandas data frame so for that what i'm going to do i'm simply going to import here the pandas let's say i'm going to import here the pandas okay it's small import pandas as pd then uh, simply what i'm going to do i'm simply going to paste here xml so this is nothing but xml version the encoding is utf8 and you can see there the url set and having the url let's nothing but call the namespace also and it having the url and inside this url uh, it having the lock the last modification the change frequency so this is nothing but a structure of the xml file right so what i'm going to do i'm simply going to shift enter and it will load it here now i'm going to use the method that's called read xml read xml like that then what i'm going to do i'm simply going to pass my xml now it will convert this xml file uh, into my pandas data frame so now let's say okay so it's converted my data into the pandas data frame so now what i'm going to do i am simply going to uh, see the type of the data let's say i'm going to make it df equal to uh, xml if i'm trying to check the type of the data let's say type and i'm going to use here my df and if i click it to run the file from here and you can see here this is nothing but on data frame by default it will convert and deem a data into the data frame so now if i again go on here and use the shift tab from the keyboard and if i explore it you can see here there is a property called the xpath there's a property called xpath and also a property called namespaces so you're actually discussing about that what is actually xpath and what is the namespaces so for that i need to paste here another xml file so last time i'm going to paste here the xml file so this is also the another version that how can you do that see uh, this xml file and also this xml file also same just having some different on that you have the url set with having the namespace and you have the extra url tag but there is a just one URL tag. I mean, three URL tag, but in the same row. And all the URL sets just having all the property, just like the CSS that you actually do in the web development or web designing. So this is mostly same as like that. So what I can do, I simply going to actually uh, pass here the file. Then I'm going to simply uh, copy this one and I'm going to pass it here. And if I run this file uh, and see the DEF, and if I'm trying to run the file, so all the uh, things are same. All the things are same. But how it's not getting any data you can see it's actually showing up the none because in the file you can see the log the log the log but it having the last mode but it don't have the last mode so it by default actually make this uh should be the none you can also add here a property that's called the x path let's say i'm going to add here my x path x path so let's say i'm going to actually load in the file based on my url x path so this is called the x path so you know i need to give here one dot then I have to give here this uh, backslash n and I'm going to give here my URL. Then you can see it's simply going to load the file. Just like you can see how you don't put here the X path and how you put the X path. So this is how you the X path actually work. Now I need to pass here another XML file. Okay, so I'm going to pass here another XML path. And you can see this is nothing but XML file. If I'm trying to run this file again, see here having some different, it having one namespace doc colon data. And based on the name space, it will try to load the data from here. So now what I can do, I'm simply going to copy this one. Just copy this one and I'm going to paste it here. And if I if I just remove this X path from here, just remove this X path. And if I run the file from here, it will also load it. If I see the DF and try to run the file and you can see here, it will also load the file correctly. It also loaded the file correctly. Now you can also add here the name space based on the name space. You can also load them. Let's say you have so many uh so many data are available now based on the data which data you are going to extract let's say you have a doc row you have a doc column 
so you can actually specifically uh, actually access the column from here so that's why you need to give it the x path so let's say i'm going to give here my x path so let's say my x path so the x path is nothing but my row this row not just not only row it having a doc row so i need to give here this like this way so let's say doc and having the row doc row and i need to also give here my x path based on the x path actually actually getting the data from here if i uh trying to run the file from here it's not giving me the error okay it's called x okay x path <laughs> it's x path so it will not give me the error okay x path doesn't return any nodes be sure low level data are x path and if documents okay it's not getting this okay it's not dot it having the colon also so that's why it's not showing up undefined name is big c it said the undefined the name is space prefix now what is actually name is it's not like the css i mean i mean c++ when you doing the code in the c++ that's called using name is space std that means you are going to load into all the standard library from the c++ now you can see how i actually give you the x path in the data let's say i'm going to give you the x path let's say ul so let's see if is there give me the any error or not see how i actually give you the ul it actually gave me the error x path doesn't return any notes so make sure when you give your x path it should be the proper it should be the proper then it actually uh, loading the data from your directory so i need to run the file from here again so let's say just run this file from here again and it will give me it's not give me the error in this case but in this case it, it will give me this error see because undefined the name space so when you you have the name space you have the name space you need to also mention your name space right so for that, I have to give you the name space. Let's say name spaces. So name spaces, and I need to give you the name space in the dictionary format. So my name space name is nothing but my dog, and the name space name is nothing but called http dot example dot com. So I'm just going to copy this out. Just copy this out, and I'm going to simply paste it here. Simply paste it here, and let's run it out. Now you can see you don't have any error, and all the data are actually loaded correctly. You can also or convert them i mean save them into the xml file in your uh, folder so let's say test okay let's say i'm going to make it as testing dot xml and shift enter you can see it will actually load the data okay if i check on my folder you can see here it having the taxing dot x xml and you can see here the zero score 360 4001 so this is how it is loading the xml file in your browsers so that's it for today now and this is the last part in this pandas uh, tutorial hope you enjoy all of the tutorial part number one part number two and part number three and the next one we're discussing about the numpy library in python so which one is most important then we are going to go further like we're discussing about the scale on the tensorflow pythors seaborn matlab with so many library we're going to be available in the python uh, we are actually discussing about that and try to exploring all the things from here right so i hope you like this video so and also do the subscribe on that so that's it that's it for today now